Elaine, did did you want have anything that you'd like to add? Uh, okay, would you mind coming to the podium then, so we can <clears throat> public can hear you as well? As Jim said, I'm Elaine Fallander. I live at 16 Mayor's Hollow Lane, and I'm here as the chair of the planning board. Um, I think Jim described pretty well what we're doing. I just wanted to amplify a couple of points. First of all, I think um, many of the issues that come to us come to us after there's been discussion at the town council that the planning board hasn't heard. So we don't have the political context, if, if you will, or the, the background for the information, for the proposals that come. We have an amendment that we're asked to consider, and often we feel that we're doing it in sort of a vacuum. And as, as a planning board, we tend to focus on what makes the most sense from a planning perspective. What's the, the best, what are the land use alternatives here and, and what is going to help the town in terms of enforcing its ordinances and the growth desires or growth limitations as we see them in the comprehensive plan. But I know that sometimes when things then come back to the town council, there are other perspectives that are in addition to the purely planning perspectives. So we thought that would, it would be very helpful if someone from the town council would come and just give us some context when we first get something proposed. The other thing that, that we have found um, in our process, particularly for issues that are more complex or more controversial, we have many opportunities for public participation and then a matter will come back to the town council. And there are many more opportunities for public participation. And our perception is that many members of the public get burnt out because they come to our very initial meetings and we don't see those individuals again. And the, the individuals most directly affected tend to continue to come to all of the various meetings, but the the input that we got from the first individuals who came often gets lost by the time something comes to the town council. So it seemed to us that if once we've gone through our process, if we then can bring some of our process to the town council, some of that citizen input I think will more effectively follow through. And then citizens again obviously have, a, have an opportunity to come and talk to the town council, but I think it will help with, with the follow through a little bit. Um, and I also think that there's, there is some duplication that occurs between the consideration that takes place at the planning board and the consideration that occurs at the ordinance committee and then the separate, second, the separate sets of public hearings that occur at the town council. And that's appropriate. It should be that way because the town council considers factors that really are separate from the factors that the planning board considers. But I think if there were an official planning board representative to those ordinance committee meetings, it would help the ordinance committee to understand some of the planning factors we've considered, some of the citizen input that we've had at our public hearings, and again, help to put everything in context. So that's what's behind this. Um, and I really think it would be helpful to, to everyone, make our process more efficient, and make everyone know that in whatever forum input is received, that when the final decision is made by the town council, that information is still on the table. So I think those are the, the main issues behind our proposal. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or comments? It Great. seems. To, thank, seems you. thank you. It seems to me a very well thought out proposal, uh, and sometimes that's happened on an ad hoc basis. Uh, I know in the past couple of years, Peter Hadem has come when we've had a, a difficult time with a particular issue, and that's been yep. much appreciated. So, this looks uh, to me like a very well thought out approach. Uh, any further questions or discussion, Jessica? I have a question um, on section four, the last sentence confused me. Um, <clears throat> the planning board liaison committee who, uh, I'm sorry, the planning board liaison will not vote but will be a resource to the ordinance committee 
to explain the Planning Board's thinking on ordinance amendment recommendations and as to items that have not yet been referred to the Planning Board to help facilitate subsequent referrals. <clears throat> and I was trying to clarify that to myself. And my question is, <clears throat> how can the Planning Board liaison represent the Planning Board's decision, uh, Planning Board's thinking on an item <clears throat> that the Planning Board hasn't seen yet? I mean, that's how I read that sentence. So I I'm just probably need some clarification, but I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Elaine, could you address that? sentence um, that what I understand to be somewhat unusual circumstance that exists right now in the Ordinance Committee where the Ordinance Committee is considering potential amendments to the definition of growth areas mm -hmm. that ultimately will come to the Planning Board. In the usual procedure that would have come to the Planning Board first. The Planning Board would make a recommendation and it would then go back to the Town Council and the Ordinance Committee. In the current circumstance, it's actually going to the Ordinance Committee first. But we thought that because ultimately it will come to the Planning Board, in this particular case, the Planning Board liaison would go to the Ordinance Committee at this stage because it's an issue that, in order to, to be turned into an Ordinance Amendment, would have to come to the Planning Board. So the liaison at that point would almost be working in reverse, taking back to the Planning Board the input from the Ordinance Committee, but also at the Ordinance Committee giving a planning perspective to the members of the Ordinance Committee as they contemplate what I, as I gather in this case would be a recommendation from the Ordinance Committee to the Town Council, and the Town Council might then be, give a specific statutory amendment language already done to the Planning Board for their review. So that's what that last sentence is intended to cover perhaps not completely artfully. <laughs> Thank but you, you did a very good job of explaining it, though. <laughs> <laughs> you're very right. That's exactly what's going to happen from the Ordinance Committee. They're going to come back to the Council with a recommendation, which <laughs> then would then be, be referred to you. And again, this is really all an attempt to, to kind of close whatever communication there may or may not be by adding the liaison in both cases and the willingness on the part of the Planning Board to participate this way and my hat's off to the willingness to do it. I think it's great. More communication, the better, we'll, better results we're going to finally get. Oh, yeah. No, I think it's great. Um, <clears throat> and I would presume then with all this back and forth of liaisons attending meetings that the, the, the comments will be recorded in minutes um, of all these meetings as per usual so that everyone knows what's being said and considered. We don't have minutes of our workshop meetings. I don't know about the Ordinance Committee meetings. I no, don't no believe we have minutes oh, okay. of Ordinance Committee meetings either. I mean, the public is welcome to attend any of them, but maybe that's uh, food for thought for future discussion points. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we need to get into that tonight, but uh, uh, well, that hasn't been the case. Yes, Anne. I think it is sort of related, but I think it's, it would be important for whichever planning board members going back and forth and whichever um, councillor members going back and forth is that sometimes there is not consensus, at least on the council. I don't know how the planning board operates, but I suspect <coughs> it might be the same. Um, sometimes there's not consensus. So just when um, a councillor attends the planning board meeting to sort of relay the council's thoughts, they just make sure that, you know, if there's a broad spectrum of views on the council, that it, the fact that there's a broad spectrum of views um, is relayed. I think sometimes pe members of the public think that the council speaks as one on a particular issue, and so, so I, I doubt that the uh, planning board members um, think that, but sometimes members of the public think the planning board says, or the council says, if they hear one councilor say that. So. But I think whoever is going to be doing the communicating back and forth will be careful to note that. Mm -hmm. Just to, Jim. To, to answer that, and um, that, I mean, the Fort, Fort Williams Advisory Commission is a good example. I, if I have to say it once, I say it ten times. I'm one counselor. There are seven of us, okay? 
and it's real important to keep that context. And, and I think your, your words, your caution is, is absolutely right. Um, we have to make sure that people understand that, that there are different points of view here. And, and until we have the final matter in front of us in whatever form it takes, you know, you, you, we, we have to make sure that people understand just one counselor not representing the group. Right. And sometimes it's not even any counselor. Sometimes if the idea has come from a citizen, and I'm not picking on the rooster issue, but I don't think it was anybody on the council that brought up the rooster issue, for instance. So sometimes it's just a member of the public has requested an ordinance change. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I'm not speaking so much to Elaine, but to the people who might be watching on TV to realize that um, anybody can bring forth an idea for an ordinance change. And so sometimes the council, any particular councilor may not have any particular opinion on it because it didn't come from them or from anyone on this board. So that's just important to note. Any other comments? Jessica? Yep, just one more. Uh, as this is um, being proposed as a pilot program for one year, um, I wonder if I could, could recommend that in 12 months that we have maybe from you, Jim and Elaine, you know, just a report, a summary of did this work? Was it effective? Did, you know, did the planning board and the ordinance um, committee, you know, enjoy this new process and just something that the council can have as a summary? Well, I think that makes sense. Frank. It, it does. I mean, what you're really attempting to achieve here is, is using everyone's time more effectively and communicate more effectively amongst the groups. And so much of that is going to depend upon how effective the communicator is. The liaison. <coughs> So whether it's a planning board person or not, to some degree it seems that this role of communicating being a channel has been performed by Maureen. Um, and so I guess she's always <coughs> there to facilitate that process, but it's an important role if we hope this thing is going to work. It doesn't seem to me that the structure so much is going to define success or failure. It's going to be the individuals. Any other comments? Okay, we have a motion that's been seconded, I believe. Okay, all those in favor of the motion. Okay, carries unanimously. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Um, I've just been reminded that uh, we need to return to the first item on our agenda, uh, number 57, uh, because we do need to refer the proposed budget to the Finance Committee for review. So do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, Second. thank you, Frank. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? All right, thank you. Um, we now come to our second opportunity for citizens to discuss items not on the agenda. Uh, not seeing anybody coming forward. Um, let's see. Before we go into uh, item number 60, I just do want to remind folks that we, the Finance Committee, which is the town council, uh, will be meeting uh, this Wednesday, March 16th, to begin the, bu the budget discussions. Uh, and again, also on March 21st. Um, okay, item 60, 2011, uh, is an executive session request. We have a re recommendation that we go into executive se session to review the status of negotiations with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association and to discuss land acquisition slash disposition issues. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in Oh, Mike. The state law provides need to cite the statute. No, thank you. Uh, so, Jim, is it fair to say that you made your motion in conformance with 1 MRSA section 405 6 C and D? Yes. Okay. With that qualification, did the seconder Yes. Accept that. Okay. All those in favor of the motion. Okay. We're going to executive session. Thank you.